What is going on, everyone? Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown. Day two of the 2022 NFL Draft is in the books. And finally, we get to talk about some picks. So let's get my day two grades out there. How are you feeling about this? Well, let's at least revisit and see who the Broncos went with with their two selections. After making a couple trades, we'll get all that trade info out to everyone. But they were with Nick Benito out of Oklahoma, the edge rusher. I mock drafted to Denver. I felt like a rocket scientist. Probably the only mock draft I got right after doing half a dozen of them. And then Greg Dulwich, the tight end from UCLA, ends up after moving back from 75 to 80. We'll show you all those trade details. But let's start things off by talking about number 64 overall. Nick Benito, the edge rusher out of Norman, Oklahoma. He's a fast cat. We talked about him in my breakdown of this pick, which you can check out on YouTube here on the channel. He may just be a pass rusher. At least that's what NFL draft expert Tom Downey believes. And when you think about what the Broncos have in terms of a depth chart right at that position, you've already got Bradley Chubb and Malik Reed. Well, you've already got Bradley Chubb and Randy Gregory as you're starting two outside linebackers. So I think this is a play for the future here. We get some more intel on Benito, who had seven sacks last season for the Sooners, a forced fumble. I've talked about him before on the show, about the possibility of drafting him. Like the pick, I think this is a smart play by George Payton because, like I mentioned, he's thinking ahead here a little bit. He's going, okay, Bradley Chubb has not stayed healthy since we drafted, well, since the Broncos drafted him fifth overall back in 2018. I signed Randy Gregory in free agency, who also has never played a full season. Malik Reed's on the last year of his contract. We just moved Baron Browning to outside linebacker. Let's throw some more darts at that position because we're going to play some really good quarterbacks. So Nick Benito, you may not get a ton of playing time your rookie season, but there's probably going to be an opening after that because Chubb's on the last year of his deal, and we've talked about the injury concerns we've had with Randy Gregory and his inability to play a full season. As for what the experts think, NFL.com's Lance Zerline wrote this about Benito. Undersized edge defender. All right, way to start things off very nicely, Lance. Who plays in a slant-based scheme that makes evaluating his three-down value more difficult. Evaluating the pass rush talent, on the other hand, is quite easy. All right, thanks, Lance. He's a wildly athletic rusher who blends get off uh, who blends get off, stride length, and flexibility into one alarming package for tackles trying to slow him down. I'm going to show you the grade I gave the Nick Benito pick in just a second. Afterwards, I'll invite you to make your own grades down below in the comments section. But what do I think about the Nick Benito pick at 64? How about an A-? I mean, I think this is great value at the end of the second round of the 2022 NFL Draft. You go out, you get one of the best edge rushers. A lot of mock drafts had him going way earlier. And pro bravo, clap it up for Peyton for staying put, you know, not panicking. Not giving up extra draft capital after losing a bunch of picks to get Russell Wilson. No, he stays put, and he waits for his guy to fall to him at 64. So how are you feeling about the draft so far? Scale for me 1 to 10. What are we thinking here? 1 being your, you know, your, your, your pants are brown and you're freaking out. 10 being, yeah, let's start building the statue for George Payton. You know, he's a legend. Let's put it right next to, uh, put it right outside a mile high. Let me know in the comments section what you're feeling like. So the next pick got moved back a little bit because the Texans, who, by the way, have been the busiest team almost close to it, maybe with the Eagles, this NFL draft. They traded up from 75 to 80, and in return for going back five spots, Denver picks up a fifth-round pick. And who do they go with? Well, you already know the name. Greg Dulich, uh, Dul Dulich, sorry, I'm, I'm really butchering this name even though I know it, but I keep wanting to say it different ways. Anywho, 42 receptions, 725 yards, and five touchdowns for the Bruins last season. The scouting report on this guy is a downfield threat with good body control. I like the athleticism out of him. In fact, if you watch his highlights, I think what you'll notice is once he gets the ball in space, he's not like a turtle. You know, he's not going to just clam up a little bit and go down. No, he can stretch the field. He has great ability after the catch. Ultimately, you just don't see tight ends get a lot of love in college football anymore. So it's kind of difficult to assess them as they go into the NFL. The measurements for Greg, 
46940 at the combine. Pretty good stuff right there, especially when you're considering the size of the dude. He's not small, okay? He's got he's not, he's not the biggest tight end of this draft class. What was it, like six foot two, uh, a little under two fifty. But I like what he's able to do for you, and I love the idea of adding another weapon to Russell Wilson's arsenal because I've said before, with the AFC and the way it's stacking up, you can't bring a gun to a gunfight. It's not a gunfight. It's a bazooka fight. So bring a tank, all right? Fight fire with hotter fire. Good way to do that, add an extra piece of an arsenal to your offense by go going by getting another tight end after you lost Noah Fant in the trade with the Seahawks. For me, the grade is a B here. This isn't like, oh, a B, that's not really good. No, remember, C's average. So I'm giving this one a B because I, I would have loved to have seen Trey McBride be here. You know what I mean? That would have been like, oh, my goodness, change my pants, A minus, A plus, that's awesome. Unfortunately, you couldn't get the top tight end, and maybe you could have considered offensive tackle, right? You invest in Russell Wilson. There were some big names out there, some big dudes still on the market, so maybe uh, I'll, I'll be eating my words if Daniel Falale can fall to Denver in round four. But I'm giving it a B for now. Make sure you subscribe, by the way, to the channel. We'll talk more about day two in just a moment. But I invite you to hit that big red button, subscribe. That way you stay in the know on everything related to the Broncos draft. Because, listen, we have seen this NFL draft be the craziest draft thus far. So don't miss a thing. Hit that big red button and subscribe today. That way you are locked in. Now, Denver was supposed to pick at the end of round three. However, the Colts wanted to trade up and get Nick Cross, the safety out of Maryland. And once again, Peyton's like, all right, I'll take some extra picks. I lost a handful to Seattle. I don't mind missing out on the 96 overall pick in an exchange. I pick up a fifth and a future third. And there's always something about a future pick because you know what you do? You talk yourself into the Colts sucking next season and that third round pick being an awesome pick. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. So I like this trade back. I, you know, I, I'm sure it would have been more fun to have another name to talk about today. But if you can acquire more draft capital in the long run, that's always a, a smarter play in my opinion. Let's revisit the picks one more time, and then I'll ask for your final grades on these ones. What are you thinking for Nick Benito and Greg Dulwich, the tight end from UCLA? Overall, I'll give you my final grade in just a second. But get in the comment section. Grade the day two pick so far for the Broncos. You get A, B, C, D, or F. As a whole, when you combine the two picks right there, sound off down below. Let me know what you're thinking in terms of how harsh you want to be on Peyton or how lenient you want to be. I give it a B plus. You know, I don't think it's an A. You got two guys. Both can be nice contributors, but neither of them are day one starters. So, if they're not going to start day one, which I don't expect Benito to, right? Where are you going to fit in if, unless he I, somehow beats out Randy Gregory or Bradley Chubb? I don't see it happening. I think there's a lot of faith that Al o can step in and be your starting tight end day one. So it'll be a project kind of pick for Dulwich and just like a you know an extra depth piece right there. But I think B plus. Maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm being a little too easy on Peyton actually. I, I don't know. I like the pick stuff. So I'd also love it if you hit that big red button, subscribe. That way you stay in the know. All right, guys. It is very late right now. I want to go to bed. I'm hungry. I want to go home. But I will catch up with you tomorrow for day three of the draft. So stay tuned. We're going to be breaking down all of Denver's picks tomorrow. So you won't want to miss out on all that good stuff. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night and enjoy the rest of the 2022 NFL Draft.